Hello, my beautiful friends. It's Amanda here. And today I would like you to pack with me. I'm going on a trip. I'm really excited about it. By the time you see this video, I'll probably already be back from my trip, but I am packing to go to New Orleans with creators and friends. I'm gonna be traveling with my bestie who lives nearby. Amy loves makeup. And I'm gonna be meeting up with a lot of my friends that were at the last couple of Creators and Friends events. I know I'm gonna be meeting some new friends. We're gonna be going on adventures, doing cool stuff, getting fancy, and just we're just we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm excited. But before I get to the exciting fun part, I have to pack my suitcase. <laughs> this is always a struggle. I think everybody can relate to trying to figure out what to pack, how to fit it all in there, not to overpack, but to make sure that you're well prepared. And is there going to be weather and different types of activities and you got to bring makeup. Now layer on top of that, the fact that I'm not just doing that for like a regular old fun trip, but I know there's going to be tons of photos. People will be filming. Everybody is going to be dressed up fancy to the nines glamorous influencers everywhere. And that's that's a lot to prepare for. I don't know if you've noticed, if you've watched this channel, I'm not really known for being super glamorous. <laughs> um, and I don't, I'm not saying that in a self-deprecating way, but it is time for me to turn up the volume a little bit on my personal style, all while figuring out how to concisely pack a suitcase. Wish me luck. I'm going to show you everything, except my underwear. I'm not going to show you that. That's weird. But everything else, I'm going to show you. So come on, let's go. I got a pack. Come with me. Come on. First thing I'm going to do is pack some stuff for my carry-on bag. I know that I want to put some of my filming equipment work type stuff in my backpack to carry on. I don't want to risk putting this stuff in my suitcase because I don't want it to break. So I have this camera stabilizer. It's like a gimbal stabilizer for my phone. I ended up not doing any vlogging. I didn't think I was going to, but I wanted to make sure I had it just in case. And I have a little tripod here. This has some flexible legs, so I really like it for traveling because I can stick it on to a bunch of places. <laughs> what a terrible explanation of that, sorry. Then I also have some portable lighting and a couple of just like mini microphones in case I decided to do any one-on-one -on -one filming with anyone, which as usual, I did a terrible job filming while I was on this trip. But I do have a decent amount of photos. I shared a lot of them over on Instagram. So I'm going to create a story highlight if you want to see some of the highlights of the trip. And I, I kind of have mixed emotions about filming and vlogging and sharing stuff like this, which I'll talk about that a little bit more later. I want to give a good balance of telling you what I'm packing and telling you a little bit about my travels. So what I have here is my travel makeup bag. This is what I take with me to the airport because I had a very early flight. I had to wake up at like four o'clock in the morning and there was no way that I was going to be doing any sort of makeup that early in the morning. So once I got to my destination airport, I could freshen up a little bit. I did a little t-shirt change, a little deodorant wipe, a little makeup touch up. You can see this is just a very bare bones type of makeup bag, but it's enough to make me feel a little bit more put together and a little bit nice and fancy. And I also brought my copy of Julia Hungry, which is Hannah Louise Poston's book. Unfortunately, last minute she wasn't able to make it, but I brought this because I wanted her to sign my copy. So you know, fingers crossed, she'll still sign my copy someday. I also have a little notebook and a little pen just in case I need jot down ideas, things like that. I always have that on hand. And then Sojo's was kind enough to send me over a bunch of sunglasses for the trip. 
So here I am unboxing them for the first time. Three very different styles. I think they're all really cute, but I think that this top pair with like the half black, half tortoiseshell is going to go really well with a lot of my outfits. These green ones are really, really fun. Those are going to be like a summertime staple. And then these more rounded pair are a little bit funkier for me, but I, I think they're cool too. So I'm going to do a try on with all of them later because I think I still have one more pair on the way from Sojo's. But I did pack this pair just to put in my carry on. And I'm going to try to link everything in the description box in case you're curious. I know I'm not going one by one over everything, but look, I packed a lot of stuff and this video would be like six hours long if I went through every individual product. But I did just want to sort of give you a rundown, give you an idea of what I prioritized and how I organize things. I really like modular packing. You'll be able to see that if you haven't already. I always take little containers and try to separate things. I find this to be particularly useful during my travels as well because it helps me locate a particular item. It helps me stay organized while I'm unpacking into a hotel room and moving from place to place and especially because I was sharing space with Amy which is great. We're like sisters so obviously it is easy for us to share space but when there's two people in a small space it's nice to have everything a little bit more sorted and organized at least for me that's how my brain works so this method is really helpful and useful for me. So in my little mini tools bag here, I have, of course, all of my brushes, and I also include my little scissors, tweezers, eyelash curler, my flawless finishing touch, and then I put in my eyeshadow primer and my brow products. I just sort of lump all of these in with tools. That's how I store them at home. So it just makes sense that they travel this way. I know some makeup products in here, but just the way my brain has them organized. So it makes it easier for me. And then of course I have some makeup wipes in there. I created my own little travel palette. Let me know if you're interested in seeing which shades I chose. I definitely picked these shadows based on a lot of my outfits. And then I always want a reliable neutral palette. So I chose the ColourPop Troublemaker, which is one of my all-time favorites. I got my little hourglass face palette that really keeps me covered on most of my face product needs. I did end up putting in a couple little extra things, but you know, you just, you just can't, I can't resist. So I have a foundation, a CC cream, two concealers, a face powder, of course, my Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. I did a liquid blush, a cream like stick highlighter. And then I also ended up adding a powder highlighter from Rare Beauty. I, I just like to be glowy. What can I say? I couldn't resist the glow. I ended up bringing a ton of glow. Brought a couple of eyeliners because I've been enjoying a smoky look and a little pop of color on the waterline. And then a couple of mascaras. And this is a game changer for me. This is the Vita Liberata Body Blur. I used it on my legs when I wore a shorter dress and I really, really liked the way that it held up. Then my polishes for some touch-ups, a little bit of extra sunscreen, and then just a few lip products, you know, just a massive amount of lip products. Forget the fact that I have like that many in my purse as well too, but you know, yeah, you gotta have options. Now I'm gonna pack my skincare bag. This is like my little skincare and toiletry bag too. So I have some makeup remover and some little cotton rounds. I have a bunch of sample size products. Oh, cotton swabs. But I have some mini um, cleansers and toners and moisturizers and all that. Of course, I need a razor. I need a little zit zapper treatment. More Laneige lip balm because of course, of course I have that. And then I'm also going to pack some of my little extra toiletry type of stuff. Like I'll have some lotion, some eye drops, some mini hair care products, a couple of perfumes because, you know, you need a fragrance 
option or two. Some little hair clips, hair ties. I put in a couple of bobby pins, some safety pins, some band-aids. And I don't know about you guys, but I always travel with some of my hero patches. And I definitely need to travel with some like medications. I have ibuprofen in my purse, but I put in a couple of like Pepto-Bismol just in case, you never know. I also have some Tums in my purse, nail clippers. And my new thing now is I like to travel with my own face towel because I've noticed that my skin is really sensitive to some towels when I'm washing my face. So I bring my own. I know that might seem extra. I also made a bunch of jewelry to go with a bunch of my outfits. So I'm gonna pack that in here too with the safety of my little face towel to cushion my jewelry. And the last thing really that I have left is to pack my suitcase. Now my Etsy store just for fun style contributed some earrings and some stickers to the goodie bags for this trip. So I packed this box into my suitcase with a whole bunch of just for fun style stuff that I was so excited to get to make for all of the creators and friends attendees. And on this open side of my suitcase, I'm going to put my goodie bag stuff, my toiletry bag, my makeup bag, and I'm also going to do my shoes and purses. And then the other side I'll reserve for just my clothing. I like these little shoe bags, especially because these platforms that I'm packing right now have a velvety texture. So it just protects them while I'm traveling. Of course, I need tennis shoes. I end up wearing these more than any other shoes because we did so much walking around and exploring. And then a more casual platform option. All my shoes are black. I wear so much black, it's crazy. But then, you know, everything goes together. Everything, it's easy to pack because you just bring black shoes and they go with all of my black outfits. To be fair though, I did try really hard to branch out on some colors for this trip and I did do a sort of semi-decent job. <laughs> Not amazing, but I did manage to wear at least a little bit of color on this trip. Not just all black dresses and black t-shirts the whole time. A little bit of that for sure, but not entirely. <laughs> And I brought some really fun bags. I brought this green metallic bag that I got from Marshalls and I love it because it's so spacious and it's really fun. Then I have this awesome silvery kind of vintage 90s bag that I used for my dressy dressy night and a more kind of casual vintage little shoulder bag. That's all I brought. I was very proud of myself for not terribly overpacking on my bags. I only brought three and I used every single one that I brought. So I was feeling pretty good about those choices. Now we're going to switch over to the other side and I'm going to pack these little packing cubes with a bunch of my clothes. This one just has a bunch of my like undergarments and things like that. So I'm not going to show you what's in there because the internet is a weird place. But in this one, I'm packing some comfy jammies, some tights, some socks, and some extra laundry pouches so that I can put my dirty clothes in separate as I wear things. Okay, everybody just focus on the fact that when I'm packing my tops, I did include this one non-black shirt first. Okay, just remember that. And I did wear it. I know that I packed like four black t-shirts and tank tops on top of it, but let the record reflect, I did pack and wear a non-black top, and I think that technically counts as branching out, and I am going to pretend like I didn't just pack an entirely black wardrobe. Wait until you see the other stuff I packed, too. It's so much. That's like a little black shrug. And then later I'm going to pack a black skirt, actually two black skirts. And, it, it, you know, let's move on to the dresses because I packed non-black dresses. I have this gorgeous magenta berry velvet dress that I am kicking myself. I didn't get a great photo of myself in because 
I felt so fantastic and comfortable and I felt like a New Orleans beautiful vampire and it was amazing and I want to feel like that all the time and look at this colorful dress I wore this one too with that green bag so I I did I showed a little bit of color this time around this kind of jazzy black and rainbow metallic dress was supposed to be for a cocktail night but I ended up going thrift shopping and buying a different dress from a thrift store there in New Orleans I was out with Miranda from Slashed Beauty and Kelly Gooch and Amy and Kelly Gooch is my thrift shop queen and she helped me pick some stuff so I ended up not wearing either of these casual like gray dresses I didn't wear the very sparkly jazzy rainbow dress I did wear the skirt the black and white skirt the floral one I did not wear this suede faux lace-up skirt. I didn't wear this black mesh dress. I was just sort of giving myself options. I wasn't sure what type of daytime activities we'd be doing. And because we were doing so much running around in the city, I just felt more comfortable in jeans and a t-shirt or jeans and a tank top than running around in these more casual dress options. But I wanted to make sure that I was prepared for anything, including packing my faux leather jacket, which did come in handy in the evenings. So I feel like I did a pretty good job overall. Like I mentioned previously, I do have a bunch of my photos saved over on my Instagram page, but I know some of you don't have Instagram or aren't very active over there. So I'm going to share some of my Instagram highlights here just so that you can see some of the fun, see some of the faces and things that we got to do. It was all so, so fun. And honestly, I'm hesitant to share things like this. First of all, I'm just always such an in the moment moment person that I forget to take photos. I forget to vlog. I am just like the worst when it comes to that. There's a reason why I make the content that I make and not more vlog type of stuff. And I also feel so protective over these friendships and these amazing in-person experiences. First of all, I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm bragging or showing off. It's genuinely, I'm in awe of the fact that I get invited to anything ever. But I also genuinely love my friends. I do not associate with these people for any reason other than I really care about them. I really love them. And I feel so protective over my friendships because when you put things on the internet, People feel that they're allowed to say whatever they want because you exist as a human on the internet. And it makes me not want to share things that are really, really sacred to me, like my friendships, my vacations, my family, any sort of like charitable giving and things like that that I do. I tend to not share that as much because I'm just simply not willing to accept commentary, critique, and criticism on every single facet of my life. And I know that no matter what, that is going to happen. And I feel I have an exceptionally kind and wonderful and genuine audience. But it's just too much, sometimes too much sharing, too much giving, too much feedback is just not a place that personally I want to be. Other people can think that that's too soft or whatever, and that's fine. I mean, people share a lot, they get a lot of feedback, and it doesn't bother them. And I honestly envy that. I can't fathom it. I am too, I guess I am too soft, and I'm okay with it. But there are some things that I'm so hesitant to put out there because I really just don't want to hear opinions about every single thing in my life. And certainly I think that most of you who take the time to watch this will understand that. But that's why I wanted to share some of these snippets with you and just show you the result of such a fun, beautiful, really, truly genuine community. And there's always new people coming in. There's different backgrounds, different size creators. The one thing we have in common is we want to support each other. We want to create a community together and we want to have fun and lift each other up and just laugh and have a good time. And I am so, so grateful that I get to be even a small part of that community. Well, that's it. We did it. 
Hopefully I'll be well prepared. I'll be sharing some things from the trip. I'm not a vlogger for a couple reasons. First of all, I feel like I'm not really that interesting. <laughs> Again, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. It's just real life. Maybe it's because I don't really love watching vlogs, so that's why I don't love making them. It's just not something that I feel incredibly passionate about or drawn towards. I also am very much an in-the-moment type of person, especially when I'm having fun with my friends. The last thing I'm thinking about is pulling out my camera I feel super awkward filming myself in public anyway. I literally just sit in my little room with my little camera, my little ring light, and that's how I film. That's how I'm comfortable. But I will be sharing some photos and little clips and snips here and there, and I'm happy. I'm happy when I'm with my friends, and I want to share that happiness with you. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, found it useful. And I appreciate you hanging out. I hope that you have lots of good luck and good weather on your upcoming trips. And I will see you real soon in my next video. And I love your face. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Just went another story. It's fine. That was so weird. What a weirdo. That's not new information.